I reversed osteoporosis naturally without drugs when I was 61 years old. Right now, I'm 63. What I eat has a lot to do with building strong bones. I'm Glory B, and this is Glory B TV, a lifestyle channel for mature women who want to look fabulous, feel amazing, and age gracefully. Well, part of feeling amazing is about feeling good. And if our bones aren't in the right condition, we might not feel too good. Building strong bones naturally is really the only healthy way to build actual, real, strong bones at the cellular level. Eating the right foods is certainly one of the keys to giving our bodies and our bones what is needed for the bones to do what they're supposed to do. In a previous video, I talked about the six mistakes you're likely making when you're trying to reverse osteoporosis naturally. In that video, I talked about the foods and drinks that harm your bones and that leach minerals and nutrients from your bones. I'll have that video linked in a card in the upper right corner of the screen, in an end card at the end of the video, and in this video's description box down there so that you can check it out. That video is the don'ts video. What you eat to build strong bones is all about the nutrients in the food. Nutrient dense is a term we use when talking about foods that give you the most nutrients for the amount of calories in the food. What nutrients do your bones want? Calcium, vitamin K, vitamin B6, vitamin D, and the earth elements, manganese, copper, zinc, boron, and silicon. These nutrients are in whole plant-based foods, such as dark leafy green vegetables, root vegetables, nuts, seeds, whole grains, and sea vegetables. Dark leafy greens include spinach, kale, collard greens, arugula, bok choy, and chard. They are powerhouses of nutrition and contain minerals such as calcium, potassium, magnesium, and iron, and vitamins A, C, E, and K, and several B vitamins. You can mix dark greens into salads. I even chopped up raw chard and added it to a lettuce salad. It's delicious raw when it's chopped small and added to another salad. I actually have a video showing how I did that. Many women are concerned about eating too many oxalates in spinach and kale. In that case, lightly sauteing the greens in water or in vegetable broth or steaming the greens lightly will remove the oxalates. You can even steam spinach or kale lightly and then add it to a blender in your fruit smoothie. Root vegetables for our purposes of good nutrition are any vegetables that grow in the ground, even if they're not technically the root. Nutritious root vegetables include carrots, parsnips, onions, beets, jicama, radishes, turnips, rutabagas, garlics, and all kinds of potatoes. Scanning the nutrients of several root vegetables, we find high amounts of vitamin C, B6, and K1, folate, potassium, magnesium, copper, selenium, and manganese. All great nutrients for building strong bones. For most of these, you'll cook them. If you skip frying these vegetables, you'll keep the nutritional value without adding loads of bad fat. Go for steaming or roasting rather than frying. For nuts and seeds, we recommend eating these raw. That means not roasted and not salted. In my own stash, I have almonds, walnuts, pecans, cashews, pistachios, macadamia, Brazil nuts, hazelnuts, pumpkin seeds, flax seeds, hemp seeds, chia seeds, sesame seeds, and sunflower seeds. Nutrients in nuts and seeds include vitamins E, B1, B6, magnesium, manganese, copper, zinc, selenium, and in several of the seeds, omega-3. I store mine in the refrigerator. If I buy more on sale, I double wrap and freeze them. Interestingly, when I attended the National Health Association Conference in 2018 and Dr. Joel Furman was speaking, he made a point that when he eats nuts and seeds, he only eats them with other food and a meal, such as on his salad. He wouldn't make a trail mix, for example, and eat nuts and seeds as a snack. He's done extensive studies on what foods do in our bodies when we eat them at certain times of the day, as a snack or at a meal. 
he's certainly one of the healthiest people I've ever met. When we think of whole grains, we can get away from gluten in our wheat-based breads, and we'll still have plenty of good grains to eat. In fact, as Dr. Denise Shostak mentioned in one of my earlier videos, gluten contributes to an inflammatory state in our bodies, and inflammation leads to bone loss. Healthy bones both break down old bone cells and build new bone cells through osteoclasts and osteoblasts. We discussed osteoclasts and osteoblasts in this video, so I'll link to that video as well so you can check that out. Depending on the type of whole grain, you'll find nutrients including magnesium, manganese, selenium, copper, phosphorus, folate, zinc, and vitamin B6. So what types of other grains are available? Well, the most common is rice, with brown rice being more nutritious than white rice. But our friend, Dr. Joel Furman, doesn't eat any rice because he, he says all of the soil rice is grown in all over the world has too much arsenic. But many other doctors who rub shoulders with Dr. Furman eat brown rice. So it's up to you to decide if you want to include rice in your diet. Other commonly used grains include quinoa, which I just love, oats, millet, corn, if you're choosing to eat corn, and other lesser used grains such as bulgur, aramanth, uh, fonio, and spelt. When I cook quinoa, I'll use vegetable broth instead of water to give it some flavor. Or I'll make it plain with water and then I'll add the quinoa to a salad that has greens and fruit. If you haven't been to the Asian section of a Whole Foods market, or to an Asian grocery store, you've probably missed the sea vegetables. These include seaweed salad, like you more likely have seen at a Japanese restaurant, nori, which is the flat wrap used in wrapping sushi rolls, and dulse, which is one of the easiest sea vegetables to use in cooking, such as in soups and stews. Dulse flakes are dried and chopped very small to use like a spice or a condiment. Sea vegetables contain iodine, thiamine, copper, riboflavin, iron, manganese, and small amounts of vitamins A, C, E, and K, in addition to folate, zinc, sodium, calcium, and magnesium. I have a recipe video for making your own seaweed salad and dressing. The key is to find an Asian market locally or online that sells the right kind of dried seaweed for a seaweed salad that's already shredded in very narrow strips. In the recipe video, there is a link to the right kind of seaweed to use to make the seaweed salad. I'll link in the description box below the video for a few choices for dulse flakes. To get to the description box, go below the video and tap the word more, and then scroll down to the section title, products shown or mentioned. You'll notice I didn't say dairy, milk, or cheese. For a detailed explanation about why, I want you to read an article by Dr. Michael Clapper, which was generously pulled out from behind the paywall of the National Health Association's Health Science Magazine. I'll have a link for you to the article in the description box. Dr. Clapper answers the question about why dairy foods and milk are not good for your bones. Now the short answer is that dairy creates an acidic condition in our bodies. And when our bodies are acidic, calcium and other nutrients will be leached from our bones. So no, milk doesn't create strong bones. They lie to us. In his article, Dr. Clapper tells you more about how and the why. I also talked about an acidic body and how acidity will harm our bones in this video. Now I'm up to more than two videos I've mentioned, and I can only link to two in the end cards, but all of them are in the regular cards if you mouse over or tap over the upper right corner. And of course, everything I've mentioned is in the description box below the video. Please check out those other videos and Dr. Clapper's article, and I'll see you in the next video.